Hello everybody. Today we're going to tackle a difficult problem. Uh, I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to do it uh, kind of a college style way. I'll make a video on that and then uh, the second video will be taking it apart and I'll actually be asking more than the question but I'll stick with my central idea that time holds everything together. So what we'll do is uh, number two on page 101, hold. I'll uh, answer it exactly how it's laid out, which uh, is, a, is a little bit of a challenge. And then we'll, we'll attack it again by not just asking what is the maximum uh, displacement uh, for this golf ball hit at 25 degree angle. Uh, we'll find out everything about it. We'll find out how, uh, not only how high it went, but how, uh, uh, how long it was in the air. And, and uh, what was its uh, initial vertical velocity, what was its uh, velocity in the x direction. We'll find out everything. But as it sits right now, number two is, is very challenging. So we have this laid out here. It says a golfer hits a golf ball at an angle of 25 degrees to the ground. If the ball covers a horizontal distance of 301.5 meters, what's the ball's maximum height? And it says, hint, at the top of its flight, the ball's vertical velocity component will be zero. All right, well, uh, so I've uh, drawn out a, a diagram here. I have this uh, speed and this angle. And uh, uh, we have this golf ball being hit at this angle. We know it's 25 degrees, but I'm going to leave out. We're going to do this uh, college style. I'm going to leave out all these numbers until the end. Uh, so uh, we know uh, very little. We don't know the speed, but we do know the angle. Uh, we don't know what the vertical velocity is or the horizontal velocity. Uh, we don't know how high it went, but that is what they'd like to know. We do know how far it went, though. Its maximum horizontal displacement was 301.5 meters. Uh, some other things that we know. At the maximum delta y that we're looking for that answers question number two, this is where the final velocity in the y direction is zero as long as we view this as a two-part problem. So for part one of the problem, we start off with some velocity that we don't know about, but we end with a final velocity of zero for the first half. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do with this? Um, one, of, uh, one of the things that we, we need to kind of talk about in college is that there, there's just a couple tricks that sometimes you need to know. That's one of the reasons why you're taking the class is so that you guys get exposed to some of these things. Uh, they have given you an angle, but they haven't given you a lot of things you need, like the velocity initial in the y direction or the velocity in the x direction or the speed. So what do we do? So when they've given you none of this, here is my advice to you. Tangent. Tangent relates uh, what's going on in the vertical direction to what's going on in the horizontal direction. Uh, this is how your math teacher writes it. We're not going to write it like that. We're going to write the opposite, oh, which is the vertical leg. That's the initial vertical velocity. So just as you're hit, just as you hit the ball, sorry, it's that velocity in the y direction. It's that velocity that has to deal with gravity. It, that's the one that controls how long it's in the air. Uh, divided by what's going on in the horizontal direction, that's the velocity in the x direction. Uh, yesterday we wrote velocity initial in the x direction, but we're starting to talk about how nothing is changing in the x direction because no gravity in that direction, the x direction, and we are neglecting wind resistance. So uh, we might as well call that v sub x. That's v sub x in the beginning of the problem. That's v sub x at the end of the problem. So it's, it's not changing. All right. Um, what do we know about the velocity in the y direction? It's time to use their, uh, their hint. Uh, they said that the velocity final in the y direction has uh, run out at the top of this problem where we uh, want to know that delta y. So I'm going to take a look at Take a look at equation number one here. I'm not sure you can see it in that video. It says delta y is equal to one half velocity final plus velocity initial times delta t. Well, the hint is right there. 
the velocity final is zero. So let's have a look at what we can do with this right here. I'm looking at a substitution for velocity initial in the y direction. So I'm thinking equation number one, delta y is equal to one half times the quantity velocity final in the y direction plus velocity initial in the y direction times delta t. This is zero and I would like to solve for this velocity initial in the y direction because once I have it solved for I can directly substitute it into the numerator of tangent. This is going to be our first substitution. It will be our most difficult one too. So uh, we need to look at delta y is equal to one half velocity final in the y direction plus velocity initial in the y direction times delta t. Um, first thing I'm going to do is let's say undo this division by multiplication. I'm going to multiply both sides by two. So I get two delta y is equal to the quantity velocity final plus velocity initial all in the y direction times delta t. Now we have to remember something about delta t. This is not the whole time through the problem. This is halfway through the problem. So I just want to remind you real quickly, we did fix that in our, our, our picture here. This is delta t. This is 2 times delta t. And so this is something like halfway through the problem. This is all the way through the problem. Delta t is where the max delta y occurs. 2 delta t is where the max delta x occurs. And they gave us delta x. It was 301.5 meters. Just keep that in mind, please. All right, well, let's get rid of uh, velocity final right now because it's kind of in the way, I guess. So that's zero anyway. Remember, we're taking advantage of this maximum height where the velocity final, it's run out. Uh, and we're going to undo the multiplication of delta t with all this by dividing by delta t. So there we have it. We have velocity initial in the y direction equals 2 times delta y divided by delta t. Man, I hate it when equal signs are there. How about that? It looks a little nicer. All right, well, we're ready to go. Remember, we needed a substitution for velocity initial in the y direction. We now have a statement. Hey, it even involves delta y. We want that. Uh, it involves uh, uh, delta y, uh, and it's in the vertical direction, and so we're going to substitute it right here. I'm going to have to erase this, though. So now, tangent of theta is equal to not velocity initial in the y direction, but, but 2 delta y divided by delta t. But we can't forget this delta, this velocity in the x direction, sorry. It's kind of ugly, doesn't it? How about that? So this was what we had come up with, now substituted directly. I need a substitution for velocity in the x direction. I do want to kind of bring some math logic into this right now. Don't forget, we know that this is 25 degrees. We don't know what delta y is. We don't know what delta t is. And we don't know what the velocity in the x direction is. So this is way too many unknowns right now. If we're going to get uh, uh, a solved for here, we'll need one equation with one unknown only. So we've got to keep going, and we're going to go with uh, velocity in the next direction. So velocity in the x direction, we had talked about yesterday, we talked about delta, uh, number 3, delta x is equal to the velocity in the x times delta t plus 1 half acceleration in the x direction, delta t squared. But then we said that uh, not, not much is going on in the x direction in terms of velocity change, and so that meant that the, the acceleration in the x direction was 0, and these two numbers multiplied by the zero are zero also. And so the delta x uh, kind of was simple. It's, small, it's the velocity in the x direction times delta t. Well, that's good because we needed a substitution for the velocity in the x direction. I'm going to solve for this, but uh, we're going to have to be very careful. When I say velocity in the x direction here, and uh, when I want to use my delta x of 301, 301.5 meters, that doesn't happen at delta t. It happens at 2 delta t. 
So we need to kind of rearrange this a little bit. This is velocity in the x direction times 2 delta t. And now I'll solve for velocity in the x direction. It's delta x divided by 2 delta t. All right. Well, let's take it back to our tangent substitution here. We now have something to put in for velocity in the x direction. Ugh. Once again, I hate it when we... There, that's better. All right, we've got a big ugly fraction there. Let's uh, simplify it. Two delta y divided by delta t divided by, we'll make that one our division sign, delta x over two delta t. So two delta y divided by delta t times, and we'll flip that fraction, and some nice things happen. We lose our time. That's great, because we didn't have one. So that's awesome, and they didn't ask for it. It was all great stuff. All right, so it looks like this uh, simplifies to 2 times 2. Doing very good today. Tangent of theta is equal to, we'll take 2 times 2 delta y over delta x. All right, well, let's take roll here. Uh, if we look at the original problem, we were given an angle of 25 degrees, we were given a displacement of 301.5 meters. The only thing we don't know here is delta y, and that's what solves the problem. That's how it's done in college. So uh, delta y is equal to one fourth delta x times tangent of theta. Thank you very much. Remember, this was the advanced version.